Hey, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Way of Life. I'm your host, Gus Holland. Uh, today, I was really fortunate to be able to sit down with Chris Whited. He's the drummer for Body Snatcher and the owner of 1776 Recordings. He also co-hosts the Backstage Podcast, which can be found on YouTube, and the link will be in the description below. I don't want to drag this intro out any longer. I just want to get to the podcast. So without further ado, here is the episode. How have you been today? <laughs> been good, dude. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Can't can't complain. Actually, yeah, I can't complain a lot, but uh, but I'm still trying to be in a good mood. <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Is it music related stuff or just like life? No, just life related stuff. I live in a shitty fucking condo right now, and it's just uh, a whole situation of horribleness. Like we, I sh- I should be grateful. Like me and my wife own a house. Okay. But we started renting that house out because we were like, oh, we could, since we're getting income from that house, we could buy another house. And right. that was last June. So we've been staying in this little condo. It's yeah. a one one bathroom condo for, since June last year. Oh, and shoot. she is a, a general manager for a, a bar, like a sports bar, restaurant type place. Okay. So. You know, she doesn't get home a lot of nights till like 3 a.m. or so because the bar's open till 2 every night and she's manager. And, um, but she, while we were recording our EP that's about to start coming out soon, um, mm-hmm. we're in New Jersey and I get a phone call from her and a dude's axle on the bottom of, the, of a semi fell off and she totaled her car along with like seven other cars. Damn. And, and her job, super cool. Bought her a car. They, yeah. it's a comp, it's a company car. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, she told us her car. She's been going through rehab and physical therapy therapy since October, and um, her 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 work wrapped the car, and our condo will not let us have a wrapped car. Oh my god! With, with any type of phone numbers or business logos on it, parked there. So now we just get back. We just got married uh, February twenty fourth, and oh. we get back from our honeymoon. And since we've been back, she has to park her car two miles away from our house. So every oh. night at four a.m., I have to go drive to the grocery store where she's parking her car unlawfully <laughs> yeah. pick her up. And then I also have to drive her back to her car the next day. Cause oh we're, they're, they're charging us a hundred dollars a day. Even if they just see the car in the parking lot, it doesn't even have to be parked. If they see it, they're oh charging us a hundred dollars a day. Wow. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's... So it's just fucking pisses me off, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, doing, doing fairly well though, considering, yeah. Well, congrats on the marriage and the and the honeymoon. So. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. How uh have y'all been together a while or Yep, yeah, me and Harry have been together since um actually since the month before I did my first tour with Body Snatcher. <laughs> so really? it was like twenty eighteen, I think. Okay. And but we were friends for like seven years before that. So, oh, okay, yeah. So, so yeah, that's... we've been together for six years, and we were friends for like six or seven years before that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. But, yeah. Um. Well, yeah. Sorry about that, but I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's like positive and and negative because you got the, you know, the she got the hookup with the car from the company, but yeah, there's always yeah. some <laughs> exactly. some bullshit going on. Yeah. yeah. There's um, always some some fucking thing. So, uh. When did y'all? When did you get back from your honeymoon? That that had to be like not too long ago, huh? Uh, yeah, last week actually. Yeah, I've okay. been home for actually. Let's say Thursday. Yeah, I've been home for exactly a week. Got home last okay. Thursday. Okay. We did like a we did a long cruise and we went to like all the Southern Caribbean type places like Saint Martin and uh, mm. Saint Lucia, um, Barbados. Yeah, okay. it was it was like it was like a 10, 10 day cruise. It was uh we were like forty years younger than every person on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So I was like I was like how, 
she's like, why are there so many old people? <laughs> because yeah. they're all like, I'm not kidding. Like most people on the boat were like walkers. They're probably, you know, 85 oh. to 90 years old. And yeah. I was like, who else that works a job can take off 10 days to go on a cruise in Jan in February? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, um, yeah, you hit you hit some waves and you just see like a bunch of tennis ball like walkers oh, just slide. Dude, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. And the amount of like I don't know. The older generation like thinks the younger generation is like so rude, but I feel like I'm so polite and so are all my friends. And yeah. I've never heard so many rude things be said to people in my life. Really? And just like I don't know. It it was it was it it was comical. It was very funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the um similar situation like with the area that that me and my wife, well, so we have two kids and um and I'm about to be 32, but when they first started elementary and and everything, we just like you know, I just like hustled. I was like, I'm going to, you know, get, get us a house basically. And it was like perfect timing yeah. before, you know, all the interest rates got crazy and everything. So. Yeah. That's when we bought, we bought our, the house that we, that we're renting out, we bought it in 2019. So okay. it was like perfect time. Yeah. But now it's like, it's in Florida is impossible. Where are you from? Uh, Texas, like, uh, um, Texas. yeah. In between, uh, Austin and Houston. Okay, so Texas is pretty good, pr like price wise housing market right now. I mean, interest mm -hmm. rates are still fucked, but yeah, the prices are crazy. Like, you get like a 1100 square foot, two bedroom, one bath house here, and it's like four hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god, yeah, no, yeah, it fucking sucks. We yeah. we got we lucked out though, right before COVID hit, mm -hmm. the house that we bought, it's like. 1700 square feet three three bed with a den two bathrooms on like a half acre and we got it for 205 oh wow and it, yeah. and it was a brand new build it was uh it was for we're the first people to live in it so yeah um no, that's we, like we perfect. we got lucky on that and then but yeah now now it's impossible sucks yeah yeah no but um we yeah so we we moved to this area though and like from the from the get go, like when whether it was like shopping for groceries or I mean, like we're older now, you know, but yeah, this was like seven years ago or whatever. And uh, and I didn't have a beard and everything, but I, I still <laughs> had like quite a bit of tattoos and stuff. And like all the time, like me and my wife, we would like grocery store dropping them off for school, whatever. They're like, oh, are you the babysitter? Oh, are you the older brother? Are you like, you know, yeah. like, all this shit. And and then like we would go to the uh like they'd have like a parent teacher or not a parent teacher thing, but like uh, right before school started, they'd have like a thing where where you could take the tour of the school and meet all the teachers and everything. Mm -hmm. And like everybody's like 20 to 30 years older than us, like the parents. And, uh, yeah. and they're all just like looking at us that's like what's, that's what's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this yeah, I know my, my brother has he is a he passed a couple years, two years ago, but his uh, my nieces are now they're 20 and 15 but you know when they were like in the oldest one was in high school and and the other one was like middle and elementary and stuff mm -hmm. and my brother has like had both their names tattooed across his eyebrows <laughs> you know what i mean like he was like fully covered in tattoos he just looked yeah. like a looked like a maniac nicest person in the world <laughs> but yeah, but yeah cool. people the way he got looked at was hello hilarious yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry about your brother, but that is how you know <laughs> how we're all. I guess young, young and tattooed. You know, how yeah, we're all yeah. perceived. But um, dude, I'm about to be 36. Really? Okay. I'm, yeah. Uh, in ten. So today's the 14th that we're recording this, but like 10 days from now, I'll be 32. Oh damn, dude! I'm April 1st. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah. That's cool. Pretty <laughs> well, close. Yeah. Happy early birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But, um, okay. So just to get into the music before we get too sidetracked or anything. Um, so for body snatcher, so just, just to clarify, like I'm, I'm literally just a fan. <laughs> um, I, I've got this podcast that, you know, and we, do different playlists just to kind of like 
provide playlists to the listeners for gym purposes, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, the most I know about the band and, and even you is like your name, the name of the band, the songs I like stuff like that. So yeah, just, just, just to preface it, cause I'm going to probably ask you some, uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm all for it, dude. Ask me anything. Some, some dumbass <laughs> questions, <laughs> so, but, um, so I, I know you're the drummer. Are you the, uh, is that the only like project that you work on? Do you, do you have solo things outside of body snatcher or anything like um, that? So I run a recording studio as well. And that's actually how I joined body snatcher was I was in a band, you know, cause I'm, I'm a little bit older than everybody else in the band. And, mm-hmm. um, I was in a band like from like 2006 to 2013 that toured a lot. That's like in the same genre that body snatchers in now. And like, you know, like the death core, hardcore metal genre. Right. And, um, and then I started recording bands full time and I recorded the first record that body snatcher did that they ended up getting signed off of. And that was like, at, we recorded that in like 20, <sighs> 2015 or 2016 or something okay yeah. and then they the band got signed and i was doing like other projects at that time too like i i did vocals in a band called uh lost fortune and then i also before that the the band that i was in that was like a, a had notoriety it was a band called king conquer and we we toured all over the place all and did europe a couple times and stuff like that um but yeah so i recorded that first body snatcher record they did they they did like some tours and stuff and the like the tour that they did like the album release tour that they did um and 2017 i think it was Mm. um all the all the members of the band kind of quit after that, except for the lead singer. And oh. um, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll play drums." I liked I liked the band. I worked on the record. Like it's it's the style of music that I like. Like I'll I'll start touring again. And I was like, I was twenty nine at the time. I was about to be thirty. And I was like, "Yo, if I do this, I'm fucking like not fucking this shit up, and I'm going full force." You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so yeah, and then we everyone that's in the band now joined the band when I joined the band. So uh, me and me and the singer found our bass player and which he was also in another like bigger deathcore band in like the 2010 era that I had toured with in the past. Mm -hmm. And so we got him and then we got one of my good friends that lives here in Florida, Kyle Carter to play guitar. And it's been the full four of us since then. Okay, sweet. If you if you don't mind me asking, and if you don't want to answer, that's that's fine too. But um, how? Why did most everybody except the singer quit back in 2017? Um, it was just, I mean, mainly just when you go on a really long tour, a lot of people don't realize how hard it is. You know, yeah. it's like when you're gone for six weeks. And at you know, and especially when you're a new band and you're not making any money, you're you're barely making enough money to get gas or, or food or any of that stuff. It's like you, you definitely, it, it, it gets to your head, you know, it, it is very, very, very hard to be successful in this world, you know? Yeah. So I think that's, that's most likely what it was. Yeah. Just, and normal, we're still friends. We're still friends with, with a lot of those guys, actually the, uh, the good, the old guitar player, um, he is he's playing full time. He's actually plays bass in a band called Spite now. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah so I've, I've Spite's another band. Yeah, they're, they're, we're we're doing a couple tours with them. Their uh, next two tours are with them. So that's okay. cool. And he lives in Florida. We're also friends with him and stuff. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, so as far as the the name Body Snatcher for the band is, how did that come about? Like. That was a when when they first started the band, they they just wanted to be like, you know, a breakdown mosh band. They weren't planning yeah. on like taking it super far. They were just so I wanted to play some local shows and be a heavy band. But yeah, hmm. they wanted it. 
they wanted to like name the band after a serial killer just just because you know what i mean just yeah, like yeah. you know everyone's 17 18 at the time and they're you know thought it was cool yeah. and um the the guy ed gein oh yeah his his nickname was the body snatcher but okay. ed gein was ed gein's already was already a band so <laughs> Okay. And so when they when they saw the name Body Snatcher, they're like, "Oh, that's cool." You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to like, like mean the serial killer. They just ended up finding that name by accident by looking at serial killers. You know? I got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I had just like context clues. I had figured, you know, because there's like the term like, "Oh, catch a body" or whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, okay, it's probably something like that. You know? So. Yep. But okay, sweet. Um, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but y'all released your your last album like mid 2022, mm-hmm. and th- and then you've got uh you just had a single like at the end of February, right, of this year, or I mean of uh, uh, last of, year, of, yeah, 2023, yeah, uh, yeah, Dead Rabbit. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so, yep. And then, so I w- I was gonna ask you about dropping new music and everything, but you had mentioned already that. Y'all have a EP coming out. Is that right? Yeah. We actually just announced uh, today when the, the first singles come out. So the first singles drop in on the 26th of this month. Oh shit. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So, so really soon, a couple weeks. Okay. Uh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. This episode. And De- Dead Rabbit is not, uh, is not part of it. So Dead Rabbit is just like a, that was my brother's nickname. And we, I wrote that song like, you know, right after he passed and we we're just like, fuck it, let's just put out a single song. You know what I mean? Just yeah. to like just for just for something, you know, and mm-hmm. then right after we, we released that song, a couple months later, my sister died from the same thing. And then. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I'm sorry. So th- thank you. It's a uh, it's, uh, you know, life. Life definitely happens, but yeah. it happens, you know, um, but uh fuck the pharmaceutical industry <laughs> that's yeah. all that's all i have to say yeah. um yeah cuz they they both overdosed on fentanyl um okay that's what i, I was i was figuring yeah, something well, like that my or... brother my brother's was kind of like a he um he had ms so he got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when he was 16 he was like one of the youngest in the country at the time oh, wow. and that's a disease that doesn't go away you know what i mean it just it yeah. gets progressively worse over your lifetime and by the time he was 18 his doctors had him on oxy 120s which if mm. i took that it would kill me you know yeah, yeah. um so he was you know made into a drug addict from the pharmaceutical industry, you know? So, I mean, yeah. he, his body was reliant on it and, and, you know, he definitely started to abuse it after years and, you know, would run out and would find his own drugs because he couldn't get a script filled and stuff yeah. like that, you know, and stuff, you know, it sucks. But my, my sister was, she actually, she got involved with some really, fucked up people and you know she became a heroin addict and mm. got clean for a while got clean she had a kid got got clean for three years and then uh yeah had a slip up and that slip up was uh the, the last yeah the last thing you know so now my mom my brother had two kids my sister was single and mm. so now my mom's got her three-year-old now so yeah oh. it's been a crazy past two years yeah I understand. I'm sorry about that. I, um, I come from a fan. I've never said this out loud, so I don't, I don't know how to word it, but <laughs> I come from a family that, um, there's a lot of drug and alcohol abuse. I mean, and mm-hmm. luckily a lot of them, mo- I'd say like 90% or something, you know, off the top of my head have recovered or in some sort of program or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's, horrible i'm sorry yeah thank you it's okay yeah yeah i think i think addiction is a it's a crazy thing because some people are just some people don't their their brain doesn't get addicted to things you know what i mean like and then some people it's like drugs affect them in a way that that all they like me i would never understand it you know what i mean like i don't know i don't know how i got skipped with it but like i mean i've i've done i mean 
I, I, I mean, I don't really care. I've done pretty much every drug yeah. that you could think of at, uh-huh. you know what I mean? At, at some point in time, I, I've, I've, I've tried it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've never woken up the next day and been like, oh, I need to do a whole bunch of that again. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like I've never mm-hmm. had like a, a weak bender fucking yeah. doing something fucked up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but some people it's like, they try something once and they're just like, I need that yeah. all the time, you know? And, yeah. But like, I don't know. I, my brain just doesn't comp- comprehend it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm the same, the same way. Like, and it may be, I mean, maybe it's because I was raised around so many people that I like, examples of what not to do type thing yeah know? yeah i would i i could i could probably attest to that as well because you know yeah. i have had i mean almost every childhood friend that i've had is is gone because of because of opiates you know what i mean like oxycontin percocet and fentanyl yeah yeah no that's is horrible well i'm, I'm glad especially not. in florida <laughs> florida it's crazy yeah florida is from what I've, I mean, I've only been a couple of times, but I've known people from Florida and, and stuff like that. I've always heard yeah, that it's, the, it's pretty heavy. The, uh, yeah. Just the, the, like when Oxycontin started getting prescribed to people, like in the two, that two thousands, it was like, that was all you heard about. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. But yeah. So I think that's probably a huge reason why I've never fell down that path because i always like saw the way people started acting and i was like i do not want anything to do with that yeah yeah no. that's that's crazy well i'm glad you're not uh you, you <laughs> oh, but really back to music. back to music being released <laughs> no, I <don't, laughs> dude i don't i don't care like i said it's it's conversational and like obviously i don't want to upset you but i'm down to talk to about whatever you know no, so. no that's not, it doesn't upset me it's all stuff that i would i would prefer actually talking about just to you know have people hear hear that stuff you know mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah we're about to release a new song in a couple of weeks and stuff is going to start start rolling out by the by the month throughout this whole year yeah. and uh we got a lot of a lot of cool stuff like we you know we have tour that we leave a europe tour that we leave for mm-hmm. on april 3rd and then oh, yeah. <clears throat> And then we come home from the April tour and five days after we get home, we do a six weeks U S tour with spite and a band called throne and, um, a band called psycho frame band called cell Cell's actually from Texas. Okay. And then uh, a band called Gnosis. So Throne is from Europe and Gnosis is from Japan. Oh, and yeah. so th- yeah. So should be should be a cool tour. That's that. Yeah. That's all in the states in May and June. Okay. No, that sounds sick. I've um I I actually I listen to Throne as well. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, they're they're another band that's on like a lot of like the extreme metal workout playlists and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um so um as far as so y'all are gonna do that tour, you said you said April, May, is that right? Yep. So April's uh Europe and then May, June is is the States. Okay, okay, sweet. Um have y'all is that y'all's first time doing Europe or have y'all uh no that'll be this will be our third time. Oh damn, okay. Sweet. Yep. Okay. Um do you have uh do you have a favorite place over there? Like not necessarily to tour, but like spot you know. I, I uh <laughs> I really like um I like the UK a lot. The UK is fucking really sick. I it's it's all really cool. But, um Last time we were over there, we had a day off in Paris okay. and we like walked like the catacombs and stuff like that. Oh, and that sh- yeah. That shit was fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all really cool over there. People are cool. Food is great. Um, UK is just, I don't know. It's really, it's really dope. And they're, they have a, a ton of Indian food there and I love Indian food. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how. So, um, let's see. Uh, basically, like right around Thanksgiving of of last year, twenty twenty three, we 
like as a family went to Scotland. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah. And that was all I love her. Glasgow. Glasgow's yeah. fucking sick. Dude, that's the one place we didn't go. And everybody Damn. was like, you should have went, you know? Dude, it's like, it's so like just there's so much shit happening. It's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we we, we stayed in Edinburgh, Edinburgh and then we like traveled all like we did the high like went to the highlands. We went to Loch Ness and like I don't even know, like 20 different cities. We were there for like two weeks. And so, yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. That's so the, just, that's the one thing that's like, you know, you go on tour and you see all these places, but you don't have time to like really see the places. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you, when we're places, we get, we get there at noon, we load in, we sound check doors open, we play the show and then we leave. You know what I mean? Like we never like have a day off to really see much yeah so like like the, we're over there for three weeks coming up and we have two days off for the, like during oh. the whole time yeah well that's not yeah that that sucks i've i listen to a bunch of podcasts and a lot of them are like comedians and you know they tour mm-hmm. as well and they say the same same thing like, that it sucks like you go all over the world and then you're like well I had like a few days off here and there or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You go all over the world, but you don't get to really experience it. I mean, you do, but it's just in a different form than what most people are expecting to hear, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as far, so sorry, I might, my head's still on the addiction thing and everything. So it kind of bothered me a little bit. That's okay. Um, uh, as far as so once y'all are done with the tour um do y'all have or like are y'all planned have anything planned further out as far as oh yeah yeah like, we have see? we our entire like tours music coming out stuff like that like we are we are a completely booked solid until march of 2025 Oh shit. Okay. That's yeah. Just, but it's all stuff that it's not announced yet that, you know what I mean? Like yeah, stuff yeah. that I, I can't say who it's with or what it is, but yeah, we are booked solid till, till March next year. Okay. Well, that's, that's sick. So congrats. Yeah. On that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fucking so dope. Yeah. I'm uh there's a couple of things that I'm, I just can't wait for it to happen just so i can be like yo <laughs> yeah for sure okay well i'll I'll definitely keep an eye out as well as everybody oh, yeah. else but um so book so i mean as far as so body snatcher obviously is doing very well um is that is I guess like health of the band as a, as a whole, is it, would you say that that's, that's doing pretty well as well? Like everybody's getting along. Yeah. And like- oh yeah, definitely. The, the, the group that we have, like we've been this, this same unit mm-hmm. for, you know, for six years mm-hmm. and like that's come, that's all the way down to like our tour manager has been with us that long. Okay. And he also is uh he also is uh our merch manager like for while we're on the road. And then our sound guy, he goes on every tour with us and he's like part like they're both part of the band. So there's there's six of us and okay. and um six of us that are always on on tour together for every single tour, same six people. And yeah, we all we all get along extremely well. And it's like, you know, no matter what whenever you live with somebody and you know, living with somebody in a house is one thing living with somebody in a van or a bus is a completely different thing. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not going to say that there's never arguments, but if there is an argument, it is so minor that, I mean, whenever I see how other bands act, I'm like, Holy shit. I fucking love our band, dude. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, we all get along so well. If there is any type of disagreement, it's always so small and everybody is, is very good at at um at just talk talking. You know what I mean? Like we're we're all very very level headed and we're all we're all really good at just having conversations with each other to resolve whatever it was, which I mean I would say maybe we have a conversation that has to resolve an issue once to two times a year, 
maybe. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> so you know what I mean? So it's very, very rare. Yeah. So that's that's good. Um but yeah, and we got we have a great manager who uh is like the band's manager, a great booking agent, and they've been with us same amount of time. It's just like we have we have a really good, really good team. Yeah. No, that's that's sick. And and speaking of merch, that the uh y'all's vinyls are sick, by the way. Like just the like I don't know. I'm all I've always some people just like the the black vinyls or whatever, but like y'all have all the like mixed colors and shit and yeah, know, different all. color. Yeah, it's I know that's there's some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. The like, new one that we that we just that we just announced is just straight black, but there's gonna be more later on down the road. I can't say when, but they're all gonna have crazy colors and shit. Okay, sweet. Yeah, no. I was looking at um the uh the newest one or you know the the album the bleed abide. From- Bleed, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And uh and yeah, what I saw was like it was kind of like maroon and white or whatever, or kind of yeah, red, red it's and like, white. It's like maroon and like a bone color kind yes. of. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's one that came out with that one that's I think it was called like the lemonade variant or something, but it was like a yellow and like sky blue looking one and it looked so fucking sick. That's cool. And a lot of those we don't we don't have a lot of those we don't even see them in person. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. all stuff that's like on the online store that's not ran by us, you know. Yeah, it's just so, like shipped straight out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So like we there was one we were playing a show in Pittsburgh and um there's a record store connected to it and we went down in there and they had that one. We, we all bought our own, Really, <laughs> even though it's our own band, but we all bought it. Cause we're like, damn, that one looks so sick. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's sick. That's, that's kind of how, so just for e cause like, I, I don't do this full time obviously, but, um, I have like a job and like a side job basically besides this. So, Mm-hmm. Just for ease of of merch and everything, I just have it like similar to that, like kind of like third party sourced, and it just ships yeah. straight out from there. So then I was like, mm-hmm. man, I was like, before you know, I was like, I gotta buy like at least one of everything just to like get samples and have my own shit. Like, yeah, like, you yeah, know, like I've got for a little bit, I had fans that were like, dude, this, you know, the shirts are sick and blah, 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 or whatever. And I'm like, cool. I don't, I don't know. You know, like, like <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't I know. know, you know, people, people said it like, we'll be like, Oh, you guys, you guys sent me a small instead of a large. I'm like, no, we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. you know, I had that they're too. like, you know, we'll see people wearing stuff at shows and we're like, damn, I never seen that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, can you sign my shirt? And then you're like, hold on, let me look at it first. Like, yeah, yeah, no, that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah I'm like, that's... damn, that one came out so sick. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, so are you, uh, are y'all all based out of Florida? I mean, I'm assuming so, since y'all. Um, yeah, our bass okay. player was um in New Jersey. Okay, and yeah. for like the first four years, he was in the band. He just moved down to Florida like a year and a half ago, and um. But yeah, so now everybody lives in Florida, but we're all really far away from each other in Florida. Like wow. me and my guitar player are like an hour to an hour and a half away. And then our bass player and our singer live on the other coast. So they are like three hours away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So anytime that we like, we don't practice, like if we're going on tour, we'll meet up the day before and then we'll practice the day before for a day and then we go on tour <laughs> yeah yeah no that's that's crazy yeah so some of the bands i've talked to they're like i mean that that's more often the case than not at least from from my experience is that like even if they're in the same state they're kind of like having to meet up and <laughs> do things to, to yep. make it work yep. you know but yeah that's this like florida i mean there's several states like that but like florida and texas i mean people don't <laughs> really get yeah. that that like if you overlap like texas on top of the uk it's like all of the uk you know <laughs> so it's, yeah 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 it takes me if i want to get out of florida just to get into georgia it's like a seven and a half hour drive like, yeah yeah <laughs> like not, from, that's how like from from where i am like if i want to go to new orleans louisiana that's oh, like yeah. the state over right and, yeah uh, it's like nine or ten. It's nine hours if you're like hauling ass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
but it's like the same, like you got to El Paso. I think it's like nine hours from me too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. Dude, that's always the worst drive is like, because whatever we'll, we'll always play like all the tours. We'll hit like, you know, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio. And then you go from San Antonio to Albuquerque. Yeah. And that's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, it's, it's like, like a 13 <laughs> hour drive. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, in Albuquerque is like all the way up in the corner of New Mexico. So it's, mm-hmm. you're almost, it's like you're going through like four. Oh, actually, no, states. normally if we do an Albuquerque, sometimes we'll go up to Oklahoma city and then across. Okay. Or, or, or play Dallas and then across, or right. a lot of times it'll be San Antonio to Phoenix. Okay. So, so you're that. like kind of just driving the, the, the border, you know what I yeah. mean? Like once you're at, once you hit El Paso, you're kind of just on the border till you hit Phoenix. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so right now, as far as like travel goes, are y'all like, are y'all in a van or do y'all have like a tour bus or? <clears throat> Um, we've been in a van, like a Chevy express that we kind of had built out that we, I mean, we, I, we built it out ourselves. Mm-hmm. but <clears throat> everybody has their own spot. Nobody goes in each other's spots, even when, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's wherever like you a, sleep, like that's your spot, you know? Um, but so we have like bunks built in the back. So two sleep underneath two sleep on top. And then there's two bench seats. So one sleeps in each bench seat and oh, then okay. whoever's driving or wants to ride up front right. can, Okay. Um, but this year uh, will be our first year on buses the entire year. So okay. Europe, we're on a bus, and then we come back to the states. We're on a we're on like a there's a company called Bandwagon in the in the United States, and it's like a you know, it's like a it's a company made specifically for bands. And there's like nine bunks. Everybody has like their own AC control. It's like a lounge area, you know, so mm-hmm. we'll have a microwave and a refrigerator and a coffee maker. So we can actually keep food. That's not horrible. Yeah. And, and there's a shower. Um, mm-hmm. So, that's and we good. don't have to drive. So we'll have a driver. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, that's, that's the worst part <clears throat> in my opinion is the driving, but yeah. Um, yeah, because people don't people don't understand. Like you know, some people are like, "Oh, I wish I could go to the show, but it's two hours away." And I'm like, "Dude, you, like, we get to venues every day at noon, mm-hmm. and we don't leave until one a.m. And then we have a six hour drive plus almost every single night. So it's yeah. either, you know, you don't have enough time to sleep. You know what I mean? You don't yeah, have enough you- time to get a full night's sleep." You- no, you're just don't. Yeah, you're so, basically like, um, and that's you know, six weeks straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's basically like because I mean driving to me, I mean it's it's work as well. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like somebody's basically dry uh working like twenty four seven if you're if and that's you're me. I drive twenty four seven because you, I have crazy fucking anxiety when other people drive, so I would just rather drive. It you're the, sucks, but you're the driver. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm really hyped for this year to not have to drive for once. Okay. Yeah, no, that'll be that'll be cool. Get some there's some beauty rest. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, yeah, dude, I can't so I get like uh car sickness like if I'm in the back. So I'm like I'll either I either like drive or I'll ride shotgun and we can swap or whatever, you know, but I'll, mm-hmm. I just, yeah, it, it's horrible. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't yeah, know why. I, I, it's, I've never gotten car sickness, but uh, that would fucking suck. You would hate being on tour. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it's, it's really, and it's like random, like, like nine times out of 10, I, I won't have it, you know, but you get sick like, on boats. Um, No. No, but I do still take just in, as a precaution, like drama mean or whatever, mean or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, because like the same with airplanes, I've like I've been on airplanes a lot, but then there's like one time where I got like really sick, so I was just like, I'm just gonna do drama mean every time now. So yeah, when I was a when I was like really young, I remember I threw up on an airplane like really bad once, and I had to use the the bag. I think it was like eight years old or something. Oh yeah, the, the lunch and then, bag. <laughs> yeah, and then uh. I also like you. I would throw up on boats when I was a kid, but now it's like I don't ever. That never happens to me anymore. It's like flying or or on boats. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, that's about the same for me because as a kid, it was like every time, and then 
uh now it's probably like one out of ten times or some, something like that but like my dad would just be like look look out the uh look out the windshield quit looking out this you know because you'd be like looking yeah. at the trees and you get sick like so, yeah <laughs> so, uh, but anyways um yeah so as far as do do y'all do any t- type of like prep like if you're going on like a like the upcoming tour, you said it's six weeks. Is there, I mean, besides music practice, obviously, is there anything special that y'all have to do to like prep for that long of a, you know? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like we've all been doing it so long now that it's kind of just, it doesn't feel like prep really. It's like, we all kind of just know what we need and, and, and get it done. But merch is a big thing. Like, Mm -hmm. so you know, you have to pre-plan out, you know, getting merch designs made takes a while, you know? Yeah. So you have to be like, oh, we have a tour, you know, that's in whatever, May. So in, in November, you better be thinking about your merch designs and talking to artists about, okay, so you got to give yourself a couple months a lot of times to make sure you have the designs in time, make sure you know how many of each shirt, shirt you're wanting to order, make sure the print company knows where to ship those orders. Cause like a lot of bands, like, you know, you, you, you sell a lot. If, if you're, if you're playing in front of a good amount of people, you're selling a lot of merch. So you can't carry all of you. You can't carry enough merch for the whole tour in your trailer. You just can't. Yeah. So, so we'll nor- normally get like a shipment every week. So we'll normally get, you know, like, like 20 boxes or something every week. Mm-hmm. And, um, so you got to plan where they're going to ship the boxes at, you know, mm-hmm. like what UPS store is close to what venues and which ones like are open on the days you're going to be there and stuff like that. So all, yeah. all that is pretty, you know, stuff that is, easy to forget about but not, and also very stressful to figure out but yeah. the guy that the guy that does our merch is pretty good with it all and he just kind of keeps us posted and our tour manager also handles a lot of that stuff for us now so he's kind of in contact with with the merch guy and, and getting all the tracking numbers sorted out and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then you also have to advance the shows that you're going to play. So our tour manager also does that. So if you have, you know, a 30 day tour before that tour starts, you know, in like the two to three weeks before it starts, you, he will, he has to hit up the promoter for every single show. So it's a different promoter every day because it's a different state every day. Mm -hmm. So he has to hit those promoters up and get all the info that we need for the day of the show and basically, you know, they tell him where the parking is, you know, what Wi-Fi is, if there's showers, if there's laundry, what time everybody's supposed to be there, what time sound checks are, how the how the show's going to run that day and stuff like that. But you have to do that for every single day of the tour. And then yeah. you have to put it into an app so that every band member can see it and be yeah. prepared by the day. Dude, yeah, that's, that's a lot. It's like, a 20... It's that's a 24 you, hour a day job while you're on the road. Yeah. 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 And I guess that that's why you have tour managers and merch guys and yep. everything, you know, like yep. too much. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we, we used to, you know, a lot of bands do it themselves. You, you know, mm-hmm. like I used to do it myself and then our tour manager, he came on tour with us to learn how to do merch. So we all kind of showed him how to do merch and like, you know, what the, merch etiquette is and like how you should go about like organizing things in the venue like Mm -hmm. don't bring in more than three boxes even if you're going to sell more than that just if you sell it all go to the trailer and bring more in you know what i mean just so you're not making clutter everywhere yeah you know little things like that and he picked it up so fast and was like the best merch guy and then he said he wanted to learn how to tour manage and advance all the shows so we taught him that and now now we pay him like we pay him a weekly rate and we pay him a hundred percent of all the tips like ca- mm-hmm. that's card tips and cash tips and he fucking banks he like makes he a makes lot. a very fuck ton of money um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a lot it's awesome it's fucking sick yeah but um but i mean he does a, he does a ton of work he does a yeah. ton you know and it's like 
it, it, it relieves so much stress off of all of us. It's, it's, I, I would, I would hate to do a tour without them. It would fuck, fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's cool. That's, it's good. You have like a, a good, uh, good team to work with besides yeah. the band, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah. So I've pretty much ran out of questions. I just want to thank you so much for, uh, doing the podcast and, of uh, I know you're coming out with new music. Is there anything you want to plug that you're like allowed to plug right now? Like as far as their show, socials go or anything? Um, uh, I mean, yeah, just, uh, you know, body snatcher FL on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in a band and need something recorded or mixed, hit me up. My website is 1776 recordings.com. Um, I've done every body snatcher record I've done, most every traders record i've worked with a bunch a a bunch of heavy bands in the genre um and then yeah we have a new song coming out on march 26th and a bunch more awesome stuff coming out after that we'll be on tour in europe in april and be on tour in the states in may and june okay sweet dude well um once again thank you so much and of course dude Yeah, man. Have a great night. You too. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Bye.